call the meeting of the development committee of June 4th to order roll call, please. Member Kurjewski? Here. Member Chaplin? Here. Member Gustin? Here. Member Ozog? Here. Member Rutledge? Here. Chair Tornatori? Here. Thank you. Do we have any public comment? No. Uh, Chair remarks. Just want to thank Sheila for covering for me last week. I appreciate it. Um, we'll go on the minutes. I'll entertain a motion to approve the it's minutes of May 21st. Second. Motion to second. Any additions, corrections, or deletions? Hearing none, saying none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Sir, approve. I'll entertain a motion to approve 24 1674 ZSE 242 with Donna Country Club's approval for a special event second. action item for fireworks schedule for July 4th. Motion and a second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carried. I entertain a motion to approve DCO 35 24 zoning 24. God bless you. So moved. 21 Como, the zoning hearing officer's recommendation to approve a variation to reduce the interior site setback from 10 feet to approximately four feet for a new detached garage. There's a motion and a second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. I've been informed that item 6C has been withdrawn. Move on to item 6D. I'll entertain a motion to approve DCO 37 24 zoning 2426 KD A and D alike. Uh, LLC, the zoning hearing officer's recommendation to approve the variation or reduce the interior site setback from 10 feet to approximately one foot to build a detached garage. There's a motion and a second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Any old business? No. Yes, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Um, Paul, where are we at on bumblebees? Honeybees. Uh, we're not anywhere with bumblebees. Honeybees. Honeybees, sorry. Um, June 6th, Thursday night, ZBA takes up the uh, text amendments for uh, several zoning changes, including uh, honeybees. What are the other ones? Uh, other one is a change relative to our housing solutions uh, ad hoc committee. Uh, um, we are uh, changing a, a provision in the zoning ordinance that would allow, as of right, certain size lot that has been platted since the 1950s to be able to be developed as of right. Um, there are minimum lot width and lot uh, area requirements for uh, single family homes, for new single family homes, uh, new, new lots that can have single family homes on them after 1957. Prior to 1957, we had a lot of uh, legal nonconforming or grandfathered in lots. So 20 years ago, we changed the requirements uh, if you had a lot on septic and well, I'm sorry, on sewer and water, you could you could build on it if you met a certain lot width requirement. That allowed for a lot of lots to be able to be developed as of right. Didn't need new zoning really for anything like that. The sky didn't fall. We had a lot of nice new development, and we're, what we're doing is we're changing a provision, that same provision, to allow uh, a certain size uh, lot to be developed on septic and well. And we think that, well, not we think, that will free up about a thousand lots throughout the county that can now be developed as of right. You don't need to go through any zoning relief. Going through the zoning process scared a lot of developers off that they wouldn't get it. The municipalities might object to things like that. But this will allow those lots to be developed as of right now. They're relatively small lots. They're usually, typically they're 50 foot wide. Some of them are 300 feet deep, but it's the lot width that was the problem. So that should free up a lot of lots to be able to let the market, you know, develop those as of right. Um, the other code change that we have deals with fences. Um, you see a lot of fences in the corner side here at Setback that the zoning hearing officer is approving. It's a matter of, it's a, it's a ministerial thing almost, but it, they've been approved every time. We're changing that so people won't have to come in for zoning relief anymore. They'll be allowed to do it as of right. And we're also increasing the, um, uh, the, uh, accessory, um, detached accessory building uh, allowance to be higher. There's some calculation uh, that was involved that re that required, uh, that allowed for a certain amount of square footage for detached accessory buildings. We're increasing that to from 650 square feet to 1,000 square feet. You've seen a lot of garages and you know, detached structures come before you. Once again, they go through the zoning hearing officer um, uh, process, all been approved, development committee, county board approved them we're increasing the square footage to sort of mirror what we've been seeing in zoning. Uh, so it makes it a little bit easy for property owners to, to just go and get a building permit now, as opposed to going through the zoning process. And can those thousand square foot uh, detached structures be a living space? So um, right now, no. 
um, our our next set of text amendments that we brought before this uh, committee a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, we will hope be holding a public hearing sometime in June. Uh, well, it is June. I'm sorry. Uh, sometime in June here, and that will then address or start to address the um, uh, accessory dwelling units where we are proposing that if you have an existing detached accessory building, um, you would potentially be able to have an accessory dwelling unit uh, in that accessory dwelling unit where the people who are living there are not otherwise related to someone who's <laughs> living on the property. Currently, you can get a conditional use to have an accessory dwelling unit in your house for like, a, a, we call them a, a mother-in-law's apartment. Mm -hmm. Um, we've seen a few of those come through over the years. Now we're proposing that you would be able to do that uh, in an deta existing detached building for someone who is not a family member and who is not over the age of 62 years. Yeah, that, so yeah. that'll be coming before. That's a little bit more tricky, as you can appreciate. So we wanted to separate that from uh, some of the zoning text amendments that we think were cogently pretty sound. Um, so we'll have a debate at the development committee and vet that, and you'll be seeing that sometime in July. At the, I'm sorry, at Zoning Board of Appeals, you'll be seeing those text amendments coming to you sometime in July or August. Can you uh, double check with our fire departments, too, mm -hmm. on that particular issue? Because I know there was some concern uh, in conversations at the city regarding that type of change. So just on the safety issue, make sure. Well, um, the other one, as far as the well and septic, the septic on a smaller lot, 50, 50 lots, I, are we, even though it might be a 300 foot lot, but it could be smaller, mm -hmm. are we going to recommend a certain type of septic system? Because there are septic field systems, there are septic pump type, and you don't need as much land. Is there a recommendation to people so they know what kind of system to get for their lot size? Yes. Okay. Um, so just as an example, um, the reason that we didn't change the ordinance 20 years ago relative to septic and well, only relative to sewer and water, was exactly that reason, is that forever, and including today, you have to have a separation between septic and wells of 75 feet, whether it's your septic and well or a neighbor's septic and well. Um, by uh, changing the zoning code, um, it just allows people to develop as of right. They're still going to have to meet all the building code requirements, all the fire safety yeah. requirements, all the drainage yeah. requirements, right. and all the health department requirements. Yeah. So, for instance, because the lot's only 50 feet wide, you may have a situation where your neighbor's septic and well is going to be wow. close, too close to your septic and well. And that would require you then to do something that is unconventional, like instead of doing a conventional septic system, doing an aerobic system or a mechanical system. That doesn't require septic fields, so you can get that 75 foot separation. So um, we're not suggesting any changes to any of the other disciplines. We're just freeing these properties up so that people can make some some additional decisions. Um, and the health department uh, has we've already you know we've had people come in on on smaller lots and we've given them zoning relief. Some of those people have to go to mound systems, have to go to aerobic systems because they can't meet the separation requirements. And health department has issued those uh, on, on not only residential properties, but also on commercial properties as well. So those things would be available to property owners to, to uh, do something that's unconventional. Can you let us know when that uh, zoning hearing is on the ADS? Is that their usual month? No, we, we, we meet every uh, in theory, we meet every Thursday night. So when we put the text amendments out, we're required to put notice in the newspaper 15 days in advance. We also will mail to all the county board members the um, the the um, what's it called? The, the legal description. The legal, <laughs> the legal description. So you'll get a the you'll, important thing. Yeah, you'll get a you'll get a copy of all of that. All right, good. Just anything else? Uh, no new business. Very nice. Saying that without objection or adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sam.